Hey, good afternoon, good evening, Prananda. All Hello, Shmai. Things. <laughs> right, this is the first of the Digitech GCSE sessions with none other than child star, Manedith Jones. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, a, I am an adult now, though, Tom. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that Manedith used to be... Um, it used to be the voice of Norman Price from Fireman Sam. So there you <laughs> the, go. That's not true, but I have I am coming off the back of a cold, so I do sound like him today. <laughs> right. So um, this these sessions were set up. They're going to be every week, at least during term time, um, to help people get through the digital technology GCSE. You know, particularly in you know with reference to the Adobe tools, seems to be a lot of um, nervous people out there, a bit of anxiety. Um, about things like product and things like software and also things like how you approach things. And so that's why we've got um, none other than Charles Star Meredith in here to sort us out. Stop Meredith, it. what have you got to say before we kick off? <laughs> uh, thank you, Dom, for uh, setting these up. I think um, oh, no. a lot of it's people are going to enjoy these. Too late. <laughs> in that area. Anyway. Um, right then, should we get going with some slides? Yeah, great. Yeah, if you if you move over to the slides, that's great. So welcome to this first session. We're looking at Unit 3. So as you know, uh, I'm sure Unit 3 uh, is the shorter course week unit. Uh, it's worth 20% of the final grade. And we're going to try to hit most of that um, today. And really looking at kind of what I've worked out to be the best kind of ideas uh, for getting past this. So, so far, of course, um, we've got three scenarios that we've seen. Uh, we've got the, the SAM, uh, which we've seen the exemplar for, uh, which was uh, recruiting singers for a band, like a kind of talent search thing. And then we've got the current year 11s uh, who have completed the Hinneboda Lake um, scenario. And then the current year 10s, uh, their scenario is uh, cyber, Cymru, cyber. Now, although those three scenarios are really different, um, we can see straight away that, that the skills uh, and even the setup of the, how the scenario is written it has been really similar. Obviously, this could change, but so far, we can see that these scenarios run uh, really similarly and ask for the same kind of skills. Um, uh, just not, before you crack on with that next bit, uh, yeah. I just want to say that um, if people do want to ask questions and things like that, you can put a comment on here. I'm going to be moderating the comments and, uh, you know, butted in at the inappropriate times whenever inappropriately <laughs> um so if you do have a question stick it in there and we will also try and do some at the end as well but if you've got stuff when you're going through i'll be i'll be fielding questions all right carry yeah. On. So, cool. yeah i'm not going to dwell on this next slide at all um dom is going to send these slides out um just to say that uh, by looking at the scenarios they do kind of tell you exactly how they want everything laid out and they even name the folders and the file names um so instead of having to kind of decode that from the spec i put this together uh, like a little folder hierarchy diagram for you guys um to kind of help you out there all right um i find that kind of diagram um much more uh, user friendly than maybe just trying to read it out and, and try to see what they want where all right um <clears throat> so i'm going to kick off um with uh, an unpopular personal opinion so maybe we can get some rage quitters here now dom okay maybe the uh, <laughs> one figures are gonna crash but um personally i do not see the point of using video editing software to make a slideshow of still images now of course you can get full marks for doing that um and both of the exemplars, that's exactly what they are. They're just they're just photo slideshows. Um, but I really think that we're missing a trick um, by not using real video uh, clips in these projects and that the kids are going to really enjoy it uh, much more working with video rather than creating a, a still image slideshow. Um, and, you know, the end result's going to be much more impressive as well, which pushes us up to that professional mark band, whatever professional means, we're going to try and decode that during these sessions. Okay. Um, so um, we're not going to be uh, using any of the live um, tasks, any of the live scenarios in this session, because if I do that, I'll have I'll have a big row from uh, WJP, and I've already had one of those before, and I don't like it. <laughs> so for the for this uh, session and the next one, um, I've just created a kind of fake scenario. Okay, so big health warning on there. Please don't do this with your kids and hand it in uh, because this is not the live scenario. Okay, this is just one uh, that we're using as an example in these sessions. You're welcome to use it as a practice scenario with your year nine kids who are having taster sessions or whatever. But um, this is a fake one. Okay, so the fake scenario that we've got here is Carl on a com. 
Um, and as you can see in the right up there, um, the scenario that I've given us for this uh, example is your new client is Cal on a Come. It's a cafe and community center, which is going to open in the area in the summer of 2024, uh, offering an exciting range of services and facilities. Okay. And it's just basically a cafe where people can go and uh, have a coffee. There's Welsh language lessons on uh, yeah. there, support groups, and there's like a multi purpose. A uh, space there where people can go and uh, you know people can book it out for yoga and um, like a nursery. Uh, Minecraft? Uh, can they book it out for Minecraft? You can. You can. If this Dungeons exists, and Dragons. Yeah, if this place existed, you could definitely book it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the brief we're going to be following in this example. Okay. Now then, um, there are some things that you should be doing before you start here, just because it makes sense, but also because there's marks in it um, for. Um, planning and design, okay? So things like uh, if you're finding um, images or videos, ideally, video clips, you should be uh, using a search log. And I've got an example of that. I'll, I'll pop up on screen later on. You should be thinking of your house style ideas. So that means kind of color schemes, what kind of fonts, you, you, the type of feel that you want for your, for your brand. Um, and a simple storyboard um, that, again, um, gets you marks in the planning and design. And then this final one, that blue box there, um, you obviously need to download your media. But if you're working with video clips, it is worth transcoding those as well. Um, now, this is really good as a teaching moment for the Unit 1 exam. Um, if you download video clips, which are MP4s, um, that's obviously a compressed video format. Now, um, your, our computers can usually decode and play mp4s no problem but once you start trying to decode play it and edit it uh, at the same time and scrub through that's where editing software like premiere pro and rush they start to um, lag and um, things start crashing so you will find that you'll have a much better experience if you transcode video clips into a prores format basically kind of um uncompressed video files the file sizes would be much bigger but they're much simpler for your computer to work with um, and you'll have a much better experience. And as I said, that's also a really good teaching moment for the uh, unit one um, topic on data compression and, and file compression. I found that okay. that's always why Rush crashes, if it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to be honest, on school PCs, Premiere Pro yeah. crashes a lot as well. Make and it, easy. it is mainly down to, um, down to that. Okay, yeah. so this slide here, I've got nothing here that's going to set the world alight. I think everybody knows what all, what every one of these um, basic video editing skills are. Um, now, I've taken underneath each one, you can see in brackets, square brackets there, those, those comments have come straight from either the spec or from the mark marks scheme, okay? So here are kind of the basic skills that I'd expect to see in this GCC projects, so obviously just kind of assembling. So an assemble edit, just dumping clips on a timeline and trimming them uh, to the correct length. Then uh, text overlays. Uh, so, you know, having text appear uh, in front of your video clips. Um, and that hits three different things on the mark scheme in the spec because you've got, um, it specifically asks for copy, inputting text, manipulating text. But, the, but then it also takes off the layering because you've got uh, a text layer above your video layer. And then it specifically asks for text as well, again, in the mark scheme. So that's an important one to include. Then transition effects and video effects, well, they both kind of come under the effects, which is a, a bit of a, a woolly one uh, in the mark scheme. And then finally, music editing. Um, you know, you, you're going to need to add some music to this, and that uh, kind of adds to the um, multiple timelines um, aspect of the spec. Okay, so if we jump over to my other screen, please, Dominic. Yeah, give me one sec. I was actually just helping some people get to where they needed to go. I see, I see, I see, I uh, see. Give me a sec. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, great. So welcome to this very exciting view of my uh, file browser. <laughs> I know, I know. So um, what I've got here is, uh, if you remember that um, diagram of the folder structure, I've just got this folder um, with my name on it. And then under that, then I've got the subfolders that they want, digital asset and planning. So inside the digital asset folder, I've got a, a subfolder called images and sound. So if I step into there, um, what you'll see is, I've got um, a music track that I've downloaded from bensound.com. 
Um, and then I've got the original video clips that I've downloaded from two different um, video free video uh, websites. And then I've got exactly the same clips in this folder, but I've transcoded them to Apple ProRes 422LT. Okay. And so, what have you used to transcode them? Yep. So uh, when you install Rush or Premiere Pro, it'll automatically install this app. This is Adobe Media Encoder onto your system as well. And quite simply, okay, um, it, it I won't do it now because it takes a bit of time, but um, you can just drag your video clips. You can select them all. I'll just do this first one for now. Okay, you can drag this video clip uh, to the right-hand side over here. Okay, there it is. And then you can decide what you want to transcode that to. So down on the bottom left, do you see me when I zoom in on the screen? Yeah, 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 that's all good. Oh, you can. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so down here on the bottom left, you can see underneath broadcast, you've got Apple ProRes, and then you've got lots of different flavors of ProRes. So LT is kind of a, a good compromise. It's good quality, but the file size isn't ridiculous. Okay, so yeah, Apple ProRes 422 LT. LT. It kind of means light uh, LT. Right. Okay, and then I just drag that preset from there up to the right-hand side, and you see it's, it's popped it on there. Okay, and then I, you just do that for, for each one of your video clips. And once they're ready, you hit this play button, start the queue, and that'll just cook away in the background, um, transcoding all of your video clips into a uh, ProRes format. All right. So would you do that for your pupil, for all of your students, and then give them those files? Or would no, you no, would you, no, they, you they have, have to do, do them individually. They, they have to do it all. So they do this. Yeah. So, um, so they download the video files, and then I'll talk them through how to transcode them. And then they'll transcode it. Usually, I'll, I'll get show them how to do that. And then uh, during that lesson, they'll be getting on with something else uh, whilst it's tran transcoding in the background. Okay, so that's the end of us with Media Encoder. So what you'll end up with then is, is basically two sets of the same files. And to keep things nice and neat, I've put them into two separate folders, one for the originals, one for the transcoded clips. And <clears throat> again, uh, these things are asked for in the uh, spec. So you need to give them the original files uh, Etc. So there's the that's the music, and then this here is just a still image um, because I know a lot of people maybe have been working with still images uh, because that's what's in the exemplar. Um, so I will I will refer to still images as well. Okay, right. Should we jump over to actually using Rush, Tom? Yeah, go for it. Seems like a good idea, doesn't it? This is the I'll fun bit. Yeah, let's get cracking. So, and again, if anyone wants to ask any questions, you can stick them in the comments. Oh yeah, um, it's, a, it's a really good because if you don't ask now, then there's no way for Moneda to respond to those. So no. if you do want to ask anything, stick them in. I'm gonna um, before before I forget about it. Here's my search log that I mentioned earlier as one of those things to do beforehand. Um, again, this if you look in the exemplar, uh, this is in there. Okay, so this is just a classic search log that we've been doing in the old GCSE IT course for decades. Okay, so this is nothing mm -hmm. new. So these, as you can see. Uh, they've just got URLs to the video clips that I've used. I've used two websites, um, which I'd recommend, which is Videvo and Pexels. There's another one, Cover.co, which is pretty good as well, but you've got to dodge Unsplash the... Unsplash um, is pretty good. Unsplash is good for... Has Unsplash got video these days, or is it just photos? Uh, I'll check that out while you, while you go. Yeah, on. yeah, because Unsplash is my go-to for still images. Um, but I don't know whether they do videos. And then, uh, you know, I've um, made a note about um, copyright because, you know, they mm. love that stuff. Mm. Um, so scrolling no, down, video. I've got three um, music options. Okay, so I get get the kids, right, okay, choose three that you like, and then when you're actually editing, you'll choose the one you actually want. And then that bit about house style, um, what I've done is I've just got them to get three fonts that kind of um, give them the, uh, the feel, the mood that they're trying to create with this video. And then this is a really nice one. Um, they just create a color palette. So they use a website called Coolers. Have you seen that, Tom? No, never seen it. I think I've okay. got one actually, but I can't remember what it is. Coolers dot, I think it's co, yeah. Coolers dot co. Um, here it is. Okay, yes, I love cookies. Okay, so <laughs> um, you can see there, coolers dot. That one before, that is nice. Coolers dot co, all right. And uh, what they do is they can just, here we go, I get them, right, explore the trending palettes. 
okay? And then in there, you can see that you can scroll down, and there's loads of different colors, color schemes, palettes here. And they can search by mood and stuff up here in the search bar. And once they settle on one, like this one, for example, if they click on that, it copies the hex code. Okay, Very so cool. if I just I clicked on that first color, copies the yeah. hex code, and then on their search log, then just paste the hex code into there. Okay, right. and then change this empty cell uh, into the same color as that hex code, just to show off, really. You know. Right. Uh, so the way you do that, let me just do it down here. I paste the hex code in there, and now let's turn this this cell uh, into that color. So I just use the uh, the paint bucket here. So I'm just on a on a Google Sheets here. And then I go right, to custom, right. paste that in, okay, and it shows that color then next to the hex code. It's just a nice way of creating a really quick mood board. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, so back to Rush. Okay, so this is, is the Rush. Also, um, I'll put um, I'll put a banner on. There is an Adobe one, just because you know I'll have to and I because I work for them. Uh, and Adobe what? There's an, an Adobe, Adobe color palette one as well. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> Color.adobe.com. I'll stick it on. Don't worry. I I had to Google it. I completely forgot it existed. So don't I'm, it. I'm sure that that's much better than coolers.co, and I'll be using that it's, exclusively. It's, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's quite as simple, actually. Um, but anyway, but it's, it's, better, it's, better, it's better. There we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So here we are. We're on uh, Rush. Uh, this is kind of the Rush dashboard. Um, so. Um, now then, we're going to just jump straight in. Now then, there is a, a big question, and people ask me, why are you using Rush and Pro? Why don't you just use Pro? Um, and it's all about learning curve and user experience. For the, what you need to for do sure. for this unit, um, Rush more than ticks the boxes, and it is a far nicer experience, and it's just more fun um, for the kids to use. Um, and it's worth that little extra step of opening up your Rush project in Pro right at the end uh, mm. to save it off um, because you need to hand in a, a Premiere Pro project. Okay. Now, if that sounds a bit messy, um, you, I hope you'll see why it's worth doing in the next few minutes. Totally okay. worth doing. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. This is Premiere Rush. This is the dashboard. Um, so obviously, before getting this point, I've transcoded all my media and it's in a folder ready to go. Okay. Because I am super organized. So mm -hmm. I'm going to create a new project by clicking on the button that says create a new project. So uh, on the left hand side, obviously, I'm going to I'm going to um, find my folder. So I've got documents and then it is here we go. I got it in Digitech Live. And there's my unit three, images and sound, and I want the transcoded clips. Now then, you could here just select them all, okay? I could just highlight them all, or I could just hit Control A or Command A on a Mac and just select them all. Um, but you're actually missing a bit of a trick there because uh, what you can do right at this early stage is put them in the correct order. OK, so by clicking on them, um, you'll see that they num get numbered. So I'll just um, click. You see one, two, three, et cetera. OK, so then we got four there. And then maybe I want to go to the uh, the yoga bit next. Yoga, yoga. And then the music space. And then the fact that they use it for uh, like a kid's nursery. Oh, sorry, my mouse is lagging a bit here. Oh, there we are. My Mac is telling me to slow down. Right. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. So Be there fine. we are. We're back. Okay, so as you can see, um, as I click on them, it's kind of numbering them, and it's adding the thumbnails down here at the bottom of the screen in that order that I've clicked on them. Don't get too hung up on this. You can always change the order. Okay, it's not uh, set in stone. And I'm going to add a project name in here. And um, the project name I'm going to use is Kalonakum because that's what we're doing. You're going to say something. What, the amount of times, like the amount of times, I forget to put a project name in. Yeah. And then it is an absolute pain in the backside to try and find out which one is which. Yeah. So don't forget yeah. the project name. That's a little tip. No, definitely. Uh, just to just to uh, be a super boring. Um, uh, WJC specified that these projects should not be available uh, online outside of timetable lessons. Um, so if you untick 
sync with Creative Cloud, it basically mean, means that uh, this project stays on the machine that they're using. Um, so that then means you you wouldn't get into trouble with uh, <clears throat> with keeping the work secure. Okay, so I've unticked the sync there. Okay, cool. So once you've got them in order, I'm just going to click days. I'm going to click create bottom right. Okay, that blue button, and it's going to just uh, pop those up. Okay, now if you didn't transcode your media first, uh, it, it would now be taking a long time to kind of prepare these video clips okay yeah. but as you can see i can scrub through this you can see this kind of fast scrubbing that i'm doing uh, if you try doing that with uh, with the original downloaded media oh my god forget doing it this would, yeah doing this would basically just make your machine crash and you'd have to switch it off and switch it back on again okay <laughs> so this is the proof that you need to um you need to convert them you need to transcode them okay because this is it's like butter here now at the moment, isn't yeah. it? Smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So here we go. We're in Rush. Now then, uh, what's nice is this tells you um, where you're at, where the playhead is. The playhead is this blue line that I'm dragging back and forth. Um, but this gives you your total runtime for the video project. So obviously as part of their um, measurable outcomes, they'll have said what their target uh, video length is going to be for this project. So they can basically keep uh, an eye on that constantly as they're editing to make sure that the total runtime is roughly where it is should there, be. Is there a suggested runtime for this? No, there isn't. In Unit 2, for the animation, there is. Um, in Unit 3, it just needs to be appropriate for the um, social media app that they have decided on. Okay, so the kids have to decide uh, which social media app they, they're going to post this onto. Um, and then they need Do you to have like a ballpark in mind when you're doing yours? Yeah, yeah. Personally, I tell them between 30 seconds and a minute. That's, that's yeah, my, that sounds um, about right to me. I was going to suggest that, and I thought I'm going to, I'll get you in trouble for. No, you know, no, maybe I got myself in trouble. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, and I and I know, you know, especially on things like if they chose TikTok as their target social media oh, app, yeah. then then even thirty seconds is long. But I think yeah. in order to get the marks and you know for the examiner the to be able to see all the skills, I, I I think it needs to be thirty seconds as a as a as a mm. lowest uh, run time. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah quickest runtime you know if people are at home and they've done 20 seconds please don't start you know shouting at the screen this is that is definitely my interpretation that's uh yeah. that doesn't come from WG, I think it so completely it's... depends on the story doesn't it they've got to tell a story within it if the story yeah. can be told in you know 25 seconds then fair enough yeah but if you want exactly. to get more in there then you know there's yeah. no there's no harm in it being under a minute is there precisely yeah okay so as you can see within rush there, there aren't a load of tools overwhelming you. Now, if you looked at this view in Pro, um, it's a very different um, experience. <laughs> so quite simply, on the right-hand side, you've got a really simple um, toolbar here. And, it, and uh, nicely as well, if you hover over any of these, it pops up a little um, window explaining what, what that is. Okay, so, you know, this is nice, really user-friendly. And then on the left-hand side, there's even fewer uh, buttons. Um, this blue plus, I'm sure you'd guessed, is if you want to add something else in. We, for example, we'll be adding the music in later on. Okay, you just click that, and as you can see, this is really simple to spot as well. You know, you can add more media, you can add text mm -hmm. or graphics, add in some audio from Premier Rush's own library, or you can uh, record a voiceover. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's start off. So if you just skip over to my other screen for just uh, a second, Dom, please. Yeah. Um, we're on the basic video editing skills. So let's hit the first yeah. one, assemble editing. So for this, um, you know, we're talking about appropriate clip length here. Um, and you can come back to Rush now, Dom. On, yeah. um, as a rule of thumb, again, this is not hard and fast, and this certainly doesn't come from WJC, but, um, you know, I did work in... Uh, I did work in the media as a video editor before going into teaching, Dom. I don't know if you knew that. Um, was this after being a child star? It was. It was after. Right, it was got you. Just, just, just trying to match things up, you know. <laughs> it was It was after that. And, and then after being a child star, I was the refrigeration manager in Curry's for a year. <laughs> That's when you were the big time. That's, That's what, true. It was, what it was all about. That was the, that was the golden time of your life. <laughs> 
it's, that's true, hiding in the fridge, sitting in the American <laughs> style fridge freezer. <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, I worked as a video editor for, uh, for a, a short while before I started teaching. So um, basically, as a rule of thumb, if you've got a video clip and there isn't any kind of massive action happening in that video clip, then three seconds is enough of that um, for everyone to understand what's happening and it's short enough that they aren't bored of it. Okay, so that's a really good rule of thumb. So I've got 15 video clips here. And if every one of these is going to be roughly three seconds each, then we're going to equal out to about 45 seconds total runtime, which math. is right in the sweet spot. Yeah, I, know, I did work it out beforehand with the calculator. <laughs> so now then, here's my first clip. As you can see, I've selected it, got this orange box around it. So I now need to get this down to three seconds because if I bring the blue playhead to the end of it, you can see that that is eight seconds long, okay? Which is too long. Now then, it looks like a tiny little block, doesn't it? So um, it really helps to zoom in and out on your timelines when you're editing. Yeah. And doing that in Rush is really easy. You just use the plus and minus keys at the end of the uh, numbers on the top of your keyboard, okay? So I can just press plus a few times now, and as you can see, I'm just zooming in there on, on my timeline. Okay, so- And also those, um, I... those ways to get the, um, the playhead to skip to the end of a clip, is really useful as well. You know, if, if you're trying to line it, if you're like trying to line up the playhead with um, the end of the clip, yeah, just yeah, just do like it. It's so much easier, isn't it? Yeah. So what I'm doing there is, if I want to skip to the beginning of the next clip, you just use the up and down arrows, arrow keys. Okay. So there we are. Is that what you went, Tom? Or were you talking about something? Else? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. Or you can use the ones just done just by the play button, can't you? So. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go forward one frame or go to the next edit point. Yeah, Okay. that's the one. Now, yeah. now, let's edit this first clip, okay? So, usually the first three seconds of a video clip aren't going to be the best three seconds of a video clip. So, I usually tell uh, my students, don't just use the first three seconds, okay? So, first of all, scrub the clip. So, to scrub the clip, I'm just going to click and drag the playhead. Okay, so I'm just going to grab it, and I'm going to scrub it forward, scrub it back, and I'm going to kind of decide, right, where's the best bit of that? And I think it's maybe there, where she's doing something with that lid. Where there's movement usually, isn't it? Yeah, who handles a jar one-handed like that? I don't know. <laughs> that a lady. That's it, Look, you st have you ever stirred a coffee and... Anyway, it doesn't matter. She just has right. second thoughts. Don't judge her, do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. And that lid is not on tight. Somebody's going to be spilling sugar after this, and they'll be wondering who's to blame. <laughs> Don't bring your OCD into this. Come on. All right, okay. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I want to start about there, okay? And then I want to end about there, I think, because that's the best bit. Okay. So this is where I want to start. So I don't want this bit before the playhead. The two options here. You can trim your clip or you can cut it. Depends on dramatic you're feeling. So I'm going to trim it first. Okay. So to trim it, I just grab this uh, thicker orange side and I just drag the clip back to the playhead and it will snap. You see, it'll just mm. snap there. Cool. So that's now starting there. So now, quite simply, I'm not going to do anything clever here. I'm going to press press play and then I'm going to count up to three or until I'm you know happy with what I've seen. So here I go. I'm going to hit the space bar. One, two, three, stop. That's enough of that. Okay, so pretty low fire that. So I could just now trim that back. Uh, I will just show you how to cut it instead. Uh, you've got the scissors tool there on the left, or you can use the S key, which stands for split. Okay, so if I click on the scissors, you can see it's now separated that clip into two clips. I can choose the bit I don't want, hit backspace, and she's gone. Okay. So that's the first clip done. So you're just gonna go through your whole timeline. Okay, now as you can see, the first three seconds of this clip are dreadful. Look, three, well, nothing's sorry. happened yet. There it is, okay, so now we're, ah, oh, okay, we got a hand. Okay, so, mm -hmm. you know, what's the best bit? It's the handover, isn't it? Ah, oh, that's too hot. So I wanna start about there, and now I can get rapid now. I can just drag it back, hit play, one, two, Three, stop, trim it back. That's yeah. done. And, and to make the point that you can, um, when you trim it or you or you cut it, 
you can just grab those ends, you know, the orange ends again and just stretch it out again to recover anything. You don't lose the footage. You can just recover it again. Yeah, very good. Very good. So this is uh, this is called non-destructive editing. So as Don oh, says, don't get I... fancy on me. Come on. <laughs> in, curries, one call, in, <laughs> in curries, we call it non-destructive editing. So <laughs> that, that just means if, if I accidentally trim it or cut it or whatever, I could just trim it back out and yeah. regain that bit that I lost. Not like the old days uh, where we used to do tape to tape editing. One, two, oh, three. That, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Right. So I'm just going to, as you see, I'm just flying through these now. One, two, three, fine. Okay. And as I'm doing that, you can see that my total run time is coming down. Okay. So I'm using plus and minus to. Um, there we go. That, that kind of YMCA thing going on there. I like that. <laughs> so, uh, so, we'll do that. One, two, three. Stop. Trim it back. Okay. So I am. You know, your pupils will will take far more care with this than I am, um, and they'll really enjoy it as well. And I suppose the quality of the um, the quality of the footage you've got is actually meaning that you don't have to do things like uh, sort of zoom in in that particular clip or anything like that because actually you've got pretty decent footage in the first place. Yeah, there's some kind of nice movement to it, and to be mm -hmm. honest with you, that I, not much of the stuff on those websites is bad. You know, no, um, it's really not. A lot of a lot of it is good stuff, and it's free. It's easy to download. Uh, so I really do think, like, why wouldn't you want to do this? You know, your kids yeah. are going to love, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to love doing this. And if you've done, if you know, if your current year 11s have done the uh, photo still image slideshow, then that's great. You know, you're going to hit the mark. But, mm. you know, maybe for your current year 10s, um, you nice can look at this. And think, something nice to get the teeth into. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's real video editing, isn't it? You know, as opposed to making a slideshow. Yeah. Mm. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm getting there. Okay, so just I suppose bear with me on this while I two, three, get to the end. Yeah. So have have any questions come in, Dom, or is everybody just loving it? And yeah, I think they're just. Um, I think they're all just sitting back and realizing that GCSE is sorted now. Yeah. Right, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting for me to well, start we will singing. We'll send out the recording, by the way, to people. So don't worry about that. They're waiting for me to start singing like Barry White with this voice. I think. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's Ooh. what we're all here for. <laughs> <laughs> I right. mean, I suppose if if they have if they are working with um, still images, they can still play around with. Um, they could uh, they could play around with effects to try and make it a little bit more jolly and stuff like that, couldn't they? Like yeah, um, I'm gonna you know what. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Uh, it's as if we've organized this uh, two or three <laughs> because that's exactly what I was coming on to now. So there we are. I've got all my video clips cut down. You can see that my total runtime is a very neat uh, 40 seconds and 12 frames. So mm -hmm. um, let's talk about still images because I'm sure that there are a lot of people that have used them. So let's add another um, clip to my timeline into the project so, I've just so that, that three blue. second thing that you were talking about that probably still applies to still images really doesn't it i mean you, you yeah, definitely yeah. wouldn't want to go longer with still no yeah even more so yeah i'd say mm -hmm. yeah because you could get a video clip um where you know something really exciting happens um you know the camera moves from one group of people to another group of people so that mm -hmm. in a way that's two separate video clips do you know what i mean that's yeah. two separate two separate locations um yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it is a rule of thumb, you know. Um, I yeah, tell my kids, course, look, and, and they do make a, um, a storyboard um, before they start editing, and they do roughly plan out how long they want to use each each clip for. Um, just it just makes everything more in intentional, you know. Yeah. Okay, so let's add a still image into this. So I'm going to click on the plus. I'm going to add my media. Now it's back here in uh, images and sound, and there is that's the picture that I downloaded from Unsplash. Okay, uh -huh. so I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to add it. You and to drag them in, can't you? And, you? and drag it onto the timeline. But yeah. the, the image will always go wherever you've got the playhead there. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, thanks for telling me now, because it's just put it right at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, yeah. it's a good teaching point. Isn't it? Yeah, the the, uh, the clever way to do it would have been to bring my playhead to the end before adding it, but you can just drag it and rearrange. Okay, so if you want to rearrange any of your clips, you can just drag them around. 
And what's nice is they, they all shuffle back into place. Now, maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, of course they shuffle back into place. Why wouldn't they? Okay. But if you did this in Premiere Pro, okay, say I want to swap, um, I want to swap this clip with this clip. If I drag that to there in Premiere Pro, it wouldn't do what's just happened. Because what's just happened there is just literally push this clip in forward and put this instead of it. Okay. Now in Premiere Pro, if you move the clip, it would leave a hole behind. Um, so it it doesn't give you a, um, this is well, I'm I'm sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention Final Cut Pro here now, which is kind of a <laughs> competitor story, but uh, Final Cut call it a magnetic timeline where right. you basically you can't have gaps unless you really want to have some, um, which is which is really forgiving for beginner editors. Uh, yeah. In Premiere Pro, if you start dragging Eclipse around, uh, unless you're very careful, you'll end up with gaps, which then obviously means you just get a, a black screen for however long that gap Yeah, is. which is one of the main reasons why it's good to do it in Rush and then export it as yeah. a project to Premiere yeah. Pro. Yeah. Okay, so I've got this still image now at the end. Here it is. Okay, so... Um, we're just going to show you, if you are using still images, uh, you want to kind of bring some movement into it. So, I um, can't remember which one's on, so let's try a few of them. Yeah, Is it on the effects, on. I think? Mm, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Okay, so this lightning bolt is the effects, okay? And, and down there, you can see you've got pan and zoom. Now, you'll also hear this referred to as the Ken Burns effect. Um, Ken, what a legend Ken was. Yeah, He's still so, alive, isn't he? Um, I don't know. I think so. I'm sure <laughs> I don't it's know. On the other day. I'm sure he's still alive. So the Ken Burns, uh, you know, is is famous in America for making uh, historical documentaries. And you know, if you're making a, a documentary about the First World War or something earlier, then there isn't that much video uh, footage available. So you know, he'd he'd have a load of still images. So to make it look more interesting, what he'd do is he'd kind of pan and zoom on the still image to create movement because you can't just have still images all the time. Okay, so here I've got the pan and zoom switched on. Okay, and now you can see these boxes are on the screen, start and end. So I could, for example, say, right, I want to start uh, just showing the um, just showing the bar area of the coffee shop okay naturally yeah and then i want to end seeing you know the whole width of it it's kind of a nice way to end this video because this is right at the end of my video it kind of zooms out as if we're walking backwards out to the shop yeah. as we as we all do in coffee shops <laughs> <laughs> Once you've done that, uh, and if I go back now and play it, you'll see nice that. The... Okay. Makes it more interesting. It's better than a still photo for, for yeah. sure. Okay. Um, so if you are using still images, uh, I would strongly recommend that you add some pan and zoom uh, to it. Okay. Right then. Now then, there we are. So we've finished our assemble edit. Uh, so if you nip back to these slides, please, Dom. Yeah. So you can see that we're moving on now to the next bit, which is text overlays, which is a really important part of this project. Um, because, um, you know, as we all know, most people watch uh, videos on social media with the sound off. Yeah. So if you're going to create a social media video um, with no text, then most people aren't going to access any of the information that you've got in your video. So the text is really important. And anyway, as we can see there on that slide, it's the, it's the one thing that I've got on this slide, which is mentioned three separate times um, on the, either the spec or the mark scheme. Okay. Right. So they really want some text on these videos. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to add text on Rush, there's actually two different ways of doing it, but you, they both get to the same place. Okay. Now you could click on the, uh, the graphics icon here okay top right and then click on add graphic and then it's going to open this panel up on the left hand side okay so let's just go back do away with that the other way to get to exactly the same place is to click on the blue plus on the left hand side and choose graphics and then we're back in exactly the same place so whichever way you do it it opens this panel up on the left um 
So it doesn't matter which way. I, I quite like the fact that, you know, it's, it's, you can do it two different ways. Um, it just makes it easier. Okay, so to add text, so you can see here we've got titles, graphics, and overlays. Um, and obviously we want to add titles. And I'm going to click on more to see more than just these options here. So we'll click on more. 20 minutes to go, by the way. 20 minutes. What does that mean? Can't get to skate on Jones, <laughs> right? Just a general statement about life. But um, you, up, you, want to get, you want to get through all of your, uh, you yeah. know, your five sections. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Dom's got some oven chips in the oven. So let's go. <laughs> Chicken he's nuggets, got, come on. He's got some fingers crispy pancakes on the go. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna add this. Uh, I'm gonna add this. I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna um bring my playhead to where I want it to be. Click on it, add. Okay, and there we are. You can see now that that's added it uh on another layer on the timeline. If I want this to last uh longer on screen, I can just drag the length out. And I do tell my kids, um, you know, that quite often they might want the text to be on screen for the duration of two video clips. So that the text maybe is on for six seconds. Um, mm. Yeah. And you can see there that the videos transition behind. Well, they just cut behind and that uh, the text is there. Okay. And do you so, ever um, do you ever switch to the, because there's different views, isn't there? So that when you put that one on the separate line now, the text, you could yeah. open up in the bottom left, couldn't you? Like the... Um... They're like the sort of more complex timeline down this the one there. This yeah. Guy. Yeah. Um, I don't, uh, I, I, I get to that when we do voiceovers. So, um, oh, oh, yeah. oh, stepping back, stepping away. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here it is. Here's the text. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to drag that to wherever I want it to live. So I might want it to live up here. Um, now you, you could use um, the font sizes to make it bigger, or you could just use these actual um, handles here. Uh, to increase the size um, as you wish. Now then, um, let's just have a look at what you can change within this. Okay, so there we go. Brilliant. Now then, I'm going to double click on the actual clip on the timeline. Click, click. Opens up this panel on the right-hand side. So in here, you can change the font of the text, obviously. Okay, so then if you've got that mood board that we looked at earlier, you might have some fonts you want to use. Uh, if I want to just change the text, I can obviously click in here and um, type in what I want. Now, uh, working with text is, does slow your machine down a little bit. Okay? Yeah, you have got to be patient there, haven't you? Yeah, so, you know, click once and wait, I think is what I tell them. Um, yeah. if, if you click and click and click, um, then, you know, things are going to slow down. Um, but that's the same in Rush and in uh, Pro. Okay, so obviously I can change font, I can change text color, so that's all here on the right-hand side. I don't need to go through that, that is all no. speaks for itself. The only thing then that you might want to do is change um, the, the color, okay? So maybe you've got uh, a color scheme and you want to use a specific color. So I've just copied that hex code and back here on the shape color, I'm going to click in there and I can paste my tech, my hex code in there. And then it just makes it meaningful. You know, that's using colors that I've already planned that I want for my brand. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to click away from that and close this panel down. Now, um, I tell my, my students, you know, really, there shouldn't be too many gaps in your timeline without any text. You know, you should pretty much have text going nearly all the way. Uh, rather than start from scratch every time, if they want to stick to the same style, you can duplicate these, okay? So yeah. instead of dragging it in again in that pink background and changing the font and changing the color, you can just right-click, duplicate, and there we are, I've got another one I can yeah. drag into place. What's nice as well in, in Rush is that these have got little transitions on them. They animate in. So if I press yeah. play here, you'll see that it kind of, there we are, kind of bounces in. Yeah. And, and it'll bounce out like that, and then the next one will bounce in. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, back to the slides, please, Dom. There we go, Bob. Yeah, so transition effects is the next one, okay? Now then, uh, transition effects come with a serious health warning. Um, there's, nothing much <laughs> that, there's nothing much that screams out amateur more on a video than inappropriate transitions. Um, so... 
Um, if you wanted to look professional, I think they need to think of some kind of house style for transitions. Pick one or two transitions that are that are of a similar style and stick to those for the whole video. Okay, yeah. it's like the old it's like the old classic, you know, um, when when you used to do um, posters in in uh, publisher back in the day, and um, students would use you know twelve different fonts on their poster, you know, um, and 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 thinking that more is better. Um, transitions in the same way as fonts. Uh, more is definitely not better. Um, yeah. Less, less is better. Okay, and being intentional. You know, I like this transition, therefore I'm going to use this um, consistently through my project. Okay, so adding, are you back on Rush now? Uh, I am now. Okay, so adding transitions. I again go to this uh, lightning bolt, the effects panel. Okay, and I want to add a transition between this clip and this clip. So let's just zoom in on the timeline a little bit there, so we can see what's going on. Okay. Now, at the moment, that's just a straight cut. Okay. Now, to be honest with you, um, if we wanted it to look professional, we'd leave these as cuts because that's a cut. And that's what you'll see 99% of the time in most videos is cuts rather than any fancy transition. But I think they're going to want to see transitions. So let's give them what they want. Okay. So as you can see in the transitions, you've got um, a selection. So if I choose one of them, something like uh, wipe left, I just drag it from this panel on the right and I drag it onto the cut between the two clips. Okay. So now when I play this back, you can see that we've got this kind of wipe and it's wiping with a hand. Now, if you want that wipe to happen faster or slower, you can change the size of this transition. So if I want the wipe to be slower, I can just extend that transition. And now when I play it, you can see that very the 90s gym, isn't it? It's all full, really, isn't it? You know, I, 90s join our gym, two for one. Yeah, I, I to be totally honest with you, I hate that. But I think yeah. I think the examiners are gonna expect to see transitions. So yeah. you know, it's not a hill that I, it's dissolve, not a hill that I'm gonna yeah, it's not a hill that I'm gonna die on. You know, all my kids, <laughs> all my kids are gonna have transitions because I want them to get the marks. So again, then I would personally not choose, you know, if, if I've used wipe left um, once, then I would probably use wipe left all the time and or maybe mix it up with some wipe rights. But I'd stick to maybe those two to have some kind of theme going on, you know? Yeah. Don't go wipe left, slide right, slide down, push up. You know, oh, please don't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Again, you know, you'd go through and you'd add a transition onto each uh, cut, okay? So that's that done. Now then, uh, the next, the next thing on our, um, the next thing on our slides, Dom, is video yeah. effects. Mm -hmm. Now this is, I think, the one area where Rush is a little bit weak, and um, you can add effects, but really they're color effects. You know, mm. I could, I could make this. Uh, I can make this clip black and white, for example. Okay, so if I click on this kind of uh, Led Zeppelin uh, logo here, mm. um, then you can see I can just add, these are basically just color effects. And is there actually any sort of specification on terms of what is a video effect? There isn't. The there isn't. Um, because you but, could do things like speeding up and slowing down, couldn't you, I suppose? Yeah, you could. You could definitely do that. You could do speed ramping in here. Um, but again, I think there's a health one. Great. There's a health warning yeah. on that. Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah, yeah. if you if you haven't got if you've got kind of high octane music, then that works. But if you've mm -hmm. got a chilled chilled out music, then speed ramping never works. No. So you see, I've just put a black and white filter on there now on that microphone. But um, personally, I'll be showing you in the next session how to um, add um, effects using Premiere Pro. So that's one of the when when we open this up in Premiere Pro, I literally open it up. I add um, a Gaussian blur effect, um, and I'll explain why in the next session, to one clip, um, because it's really obvious enough for the examiner to know that an effect has been applied, and then I save it off. Okay, so that's all I do in Premiere Pro is add an effect and leave. Okay, right. so you can add effects in Rush, but personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't even do that, what I've done there, put, make, make one black or white. Okay, so 10 minutes, is it, Dom? Uh, yeah, 10 minutes ah. are right about now, yeah. Yeah, we're cooking on gas. This is good. So back to the slides then, please. Uh -huh. so music editing. 
Yeah, we're on to our last one, which is music editing. Um, so this takes off our kind of multiple timelines. Now, you know, what is the difference between layering and multiple timelines? You know, there's some semantics involved there because you could argue we've already got multiple timelines because this is yeah, kind of our yeah. main video timeline and this is our uh, graphics mm -hmm. overlay timeline. Um, but, you know, I think that the graphics kind of takes off the layering, which to me implies seeing layers of different things in front of each other on screen. Mm -hmm. And then the multiple timelines, well, what's the difference between layering and multiple timelines? Well, okay, what about having one video timeline and then one audio timeline? And that kind of makes mm -hmm. sense to me for multiple mm -hmm. timelines. So, okay, music editing. Now, you could use uh, the built-in music in Rush. Um, so Not by bad library, actually. No, it's good. The only reason I, I'm uh, reticent to recommend it is that they do like their um, source log, sources log. So if you are using audio from oh, within yeah. Rush, yeah, yeah, it's hard can... to find. Actually, it's hard to it's hard to pick out of the back end. Yeah, I think I think you just need to make sure on your sources log that you put the name of the track, and yeah. that instead of where I put URLs, you could just say um, Rush Audio Library, something like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. to add it from Rush, you can just click, click audio. Okay, it's really cool. And then you've got browse audio here and you've got soundtracks, sound effects and loops. Um, from what I can see, there isn't a huge difference between soundtracks and loops. Uh, they're no. pretty similar. Sound mm. effects is great for, you know, adding whooshes and bangs and, mm. and stuff like that. And we'll be talking about that in the next video. So if I wanted music, I could go to soundtracks and then I can search. I could type in rock music, pop. Uh, you know, you um, you could put a mood in, happy, yeah. sad. So the search is really good there. Okay. Now, I've actually done it in a more uh, old school way, and I've downloaded a track from bensound.com, which is exactly what they did in the uh, exemplar, in both the candidates uh, in the exemplar. So they'll obviously be happy with that if you do that. So let's add my track that I downloaded from Ben Sound. So I do exactly the same as I did with the photograph. I click on the plus. I'm going to add my media. Here it is. I'm just still in this folder and it's there. That the name is sweet. I'm gonna click on it and down at the bottom of this panel, I'm gonna click add. And again, it'll go wherever the playhead yeah, is as well, but you can change it afterwards. It's added it there where the playhead is. Okay, so I obviously want to bring that back. Now that we are not gonna do anything clever with this, okay? It is obviously too long. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know, look, my, my 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 project's now gone from forty seconds to five minutes and eight seconds because of the because of the audio. So I can play it. You, I think you're just going to hear this over my microphone now. So apologies if it doesn't that's sound fine, too great. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Sweet. I planned this out. <laughs> okay, so now um, you could do some clever editing here, but to be honest with you. Um, I don't think you need to bother. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my playhead to the end of my clip and I'm going to click there. I'm going to press the S button, which is split, or click on the scissors. Oops, sorry, I pressed W there. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and as you can see, I got two clips. I don't want this second one. Backspace, and that's gone. Okay, now then. So we're back to 43 seconds. Now then, what's not professional, sorry, I shouted there, is this at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of cliff edge, uh, somebody's pulled the plug. So what we want to do is put a nice, simple fade out on here. Now then, it's not obvious on Rush that there's a way to do that. But... Yeah, it is funny that, isn't it? It's yeah. easy once you find out, but actually finding out is a bit of a thing. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's nearly, it nearly feels like a hack. Um, mm. But that's all you need to do is drag. I've actually I haven't tried any of the other ones, but uh, if you just drag a dissolve transition, it works with black um, going to dip into black as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, pretty sure uh, it does anyway. It did last uh, well from what I remember. On, on um, kind of professional video editing software, um, adding a trans adding a dissolve transition. Uh, it's like Command T on on Final Cut Pro or Command D on on Premiere Pro um, to audio has always done that. Um, so when I was using Rush, I was like, oh, I wonder if a dissolve transition does a fade out like it does. And it does. But, it, you know, they could really kind of point that out because it's really mm. handy. So as you can see, I'm dragging that transition out now to make it longer. Okay. So now if I play from there. Okay, you got a nice fade out. Nice. There it is. Okay. So, my friends. Uh, 
in this lesson, um, we've basically hit all of the basic video editing skills you need for uh, Adobe Rush. Um, now, your kids' projects would obviously be different to mine, where they'd have um, transition effects all the way, probably, on, on most of these clips. And you'd also have um, these text clips um, throughout your whole um throughout your whole duration as well, okay? But, you know, I obviously didn't need to do that today to show you. Now, everything saves automatically in Rush, which is lovely when computers crash. And I said when, not if, um, <laughs> because they do. Um, so to go back to the home screen, I just click on this little T-Bach tut here, okay? And uh, there it is. There's my project there. Next time I fire... And if you've, forgotten to, if you've forgotten to put your project name on, do it as soon as you realize that, yeah, because honestly, yeah. it'll get lost, and then you'll be really annoyed. Click on the three dots and you can rename it and it'll be there for you. Okay, so there we are. Now then, if you go back to the slides, Dom, for a second. Yeah. And we'll move on to the next slide. So I've got You've basic. Got four minutes here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about me. We've got mm. basic there in inverted commas. So what takes us to pro? Because obviously um, on the mark scheme, it says a professional standard for that top uh, bracket. So here are the four ideas that I'm going to be going through in the next session. Um, personally, I think uh, these things make take your video to the next level. And what I've got here is a custom logo. Now, you have to have original media in this project. That's You can't get around that. So what's more meaningful for one, a video like this, um, as original media is concerned, than a logo for this brand? Okay, so I, in the next video, we'll be, I'll be making a Calona Come logo and bringing that into Rush. The second thing uh, there is voiceover audio, okay? Uh, again, that counts as original media. It is so easy to do on Rush. It's, it, it almost yeah. feels like you're cheating. And I think if an ex examiner opens up these video projects and there's a voiceover, um, then that's going to have a wow factor. And it also gives the kids an opportunity to do things like audio ducking. It just shows that they can edit the audio as well. Third thing there is sound design. I think this is kind of a um, icing on top thing uh, where, you know, your kids that are pushing on, they could go into the sound effects in Rush and add things like whooshes and coffee sounds and, you know, spoons clinking on cups and, and all that kind of stuff because that really makes a small but uh, big impact. Small but big. That doesn't make sense. Mm. And then the fourth yeah, one is, so the fourth one is, you can't, you could do all of those other three, but if your basics, what we've just gone through in this lesson, in this session, sorry, not a lesson, if they're not solid, then everything else falls apart, okay? Um, as, as you see there, none of these mean a thing if the basics aren't badly done. For example, if you've got a font explosion, like I was talking about earlier, or a transition fest, uh, inappropriate clip lengths, you know, lingering on just a coffee cup for 10, 15 seconds, then that can't be uh, a professional video. That's my opinion. I know I sound really harsh tonight, so there we are. <laughs> no, I think that's fair enough. And also, it makes for a better experience for them as well. Yeah, great. So there we are, Don. Um, I think, you know, um, that, that's, what, that's me. Uh, if you've got any questions, come in, or if you want to ask me anything, or... Anything's all no, that's all good. So, it, so in the next session, just give us a just give us a brief minute on what. Um, so, in the next session, you've still got work to do on Rush, haven't you? Before you actually export that into uh, Premiere Pro. Yeah, yeah, loads of this is Rush, loads of it. So basically, we're going to be making a logo, and I'll be talking through how to do that. Um, and and what will you weirdly, use for that? well, yeah, right then. Now then, this is a bit tasty. We're going to be making a logo in Adobe Animate because. Mm -hmm. Adobe Animate started out as actually a drawing app, not as an animation mm -hmm. app back, back at the beginning. So it's a really powerful drawing app. And obviously, if they are learning to draw in Animate um, now, uh, then that's just going to be handy for them when they do Unit 2. Okay? Um, yeah, yeah, if that yeah. sounds weird to you, I do, I do these units backwards. I start off with Unit 3 at the beginning of Year 10, the one we're talking about today, and then I move on to Unit 2. Um, but if you do it's it the nice other way... It's though, isn't it? Yeah, but if you're doing it the other way around, why not use Animate? Because they, they'll, they'll be experts at it by the time they come to this. So yeah. uh, I, I see no reason to jump into Illustrator or anything like that. We'll be, yeah. we'll be doing voiceovers because that's a lot of fun in, um, in Rush. Okay, Very easy. Yeah, and then um, we'll have a quick look at sound design in Rush, but that speaks for itself. It's really similar to what we've just done now with adding the music in. And then um, we'll be looking at how to open our Rush project up in Premiere Pro. 
we'll be adding one video effect in there just to wave it in the examiner's face. Hello, here's a video effect. I've done it. <laughs> Give me the mark. <laughs> and then uh, we'll be saving that off as a Premiere Pro project. Um, and I'll be just showing you where that needs to be in the files. So um, yeah. I hope that and the, that and the sort of structure that they have to submit as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. OK, perfect. That's great, man. Thank you very much. Um, for everyone for coming. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We will take questions from people. Uh, I'll send this recording out to people. They can give us feedback and tell us what they might want to see. Uh, you know, talk to us about length. Julia says, brilliant. Thank you so much. Julia, no, that's really you. nice of you to, to uh, stick a comment on there. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, feedback is more, more than, you know, is more than welcome because this session is for you. We can sit here and, uh, you know, <laughs> we can sit here and spout on for hours, but actually it's for you. So let us know what you need. And, uh, and then I'll crack the whip and Mered will do it. So um, cool. don't worry about that. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I'm going to end the broadcast now, send this all out to you, and uh, we'll see you at the next session next Tuesday. So thank you very much, and we really appreciate you coming.